Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin. Decision week. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. This week that we are going into, I believe, will be the decision week for the path of Bitcoin for the rest of the fourth quarter. Now, the reason why I say this, and this is not the first time I've said it, the reason why I say this is because Bitcoin is going into a very familiar pattern that we've seen take place several times over the course of this year. And we are now essentially at a crossroads between the cyclical view of Bitcoin and the monetary policy view. And both views have merit. And sometimes the cyclical view wins in the short term for a while. Sometimes the, 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 the monetary policy view wins in the short term. I'll show you both of those views today so that at least you know, you know what it is to, to keep in mind. And I'll also show you, you know, what would help sort of validate one and invalidate the other one. And I think a lot of that will actually come this week, in fact. So the first thing to, to remind ourselves of, and I, I said this last week, I said that this past week, Bitcoin would likely not really go anywhere, right? I, you know, I know there was a lot of momentum the, the week before where Bitcoin went up about 10%, right? It went from 62K to almost 70K in a single week. And I said, look, guys, we're probably going to get a pause for a week which is different than what happened in 2023, right? Remember, in 2023, there was also a move the third week of October, the week of October 16th, 2024, the week of October 14th, Bitcoin went up 10%. The week of October 16th, last year, Bitcoin went up 10%, right? And so... I think a lot of people were really hopeful that this past week would see follow through on that move, just like in 2023, where the following week, Bitcoin went up another 15%. And it was in that week that Bitcoin took out all of those prior yearly highs. But the reason why it made sense to fade that view for last week was because 2024 has been quite a bit different than 2023. And what we've seen happen is Bitcoin rally up to the lower high structure, right? It's done it many, many times. And then pause until the labor market data comes in, right? It's happened three times this year already, right? You can see it happened over here in July. Bitcoin rallied up in mid-July, paused for a week pause for a week, wick up actually to a new, a higher high from the last two weeks, but then the labor market data wasn't that great and Bitcoin sold off. Same thing in June, right? Bitcoin rallied up to the lower high structure, uh, or sorry, in May, it rallied up to the lower high structure about mid to late May, hung out up there, labor market data came in, fall back down to the lows. Same thing over here in April. Right, March, we rallied on up. April, labor market data came in. Bitcoin went back down to the lows. And if you overlay the unemployment rate with Bitcoin, you can actually pretty clearly see that the lower high structure began when the unemployment rate started going up more aggressively. Right? Do you see over here where the unemployment rate was just sort of zigzagging, sort of slowly going up, but not really doing much of anything? It wasn't really until this move started, where it was basically up only, where Bitcoin started to put in those lower highs. Now, recently, there's been a lot of momentum by Bitcoin to get back up to the lower high structure. And if you guys rewind the clock, I said, you know, six months ago, that even in the lower high structure, Bitcoin would likely be at 70K by October, regardless, right? Because October normally is a pretty good month, right, in terms of seasonality, right? There's a chance that 
regardless of which view plays out, whether it's the cyclical view or whether it's the monetary policy view, you could see Bitcoin hit approximately 70K by October. That's why I think we are at a crossroads because both views cannot continue to both be correct, right? One should prevail and it should prevail this week. So the reason why Bitcoin, I think, was having a hard time getting back up to the lower high structure from July until today was just because, um, you know, I think people were looking at the labor market and, and really wondering, is this going to actually um, slow down at all? And now that it has started to slow down, we've seen the un we've seen Bitcoin go back up to the lower high structure. And now we wait, right? Just to see like what's going to happen here with the labor market data this week. Will it come in good or will it be bad? If it ends up being okay, then there is a chance that Bitcoin could break through here. Remember, asset risk assets like these need a reason to go down, not a reason to go up. And so that is why Bitcoin, I think, did not go up last week, right? It was because it's in a holding pattern until that data comes through to prove once and for all if, if this move in the unemployment rate if this most recent move in the unemployment rate is just a short-term move or if it is a, a new trend, right? If it's a new trend. And I think that's sort of the bigger question that we have to ask ourselves. Now, from a cyclical point of view, so if you just look at Bitcoin's cyclical ROI from the lows, normally this is around the time when Bitcoin really starts to move up, right? So you can see that the market cycle ROI around this time in the last two cycles, you know, Bitcoin was in fact moving up, whether you're looking at, you know, 2016 or whether you're looking at 2020, Bitcoin started to move up. If you look at the year to date ROI of Bitcoin in 2024, and if you compare it to 2016, it's almost a carbon copy since about halfway through the year, right? I mean, Bitcoin's been mostly following what it did in 2016 since about this halfway point. If you look at, at 2012, um, you can see that Bitcoin went up in Q4. And if you look at 2020, you can see that Bitcoin went up in Q4. So if you add an average of 2012, 2016, and 2020 to the chart, and we hide everything and just look at that compared to 2024, you can see that on average, Bitcoin goes up in the fourth quarter of the having year, right? In fact, if it doesn't do it this time, it would be the first time that it hasn't done it, okay? So to fade that would be to fade historical seasonality for Bitcoin. And this is why, and I know it's difficult, and, you know, because there's, there's, there's this monetary policy view, there's, the, there's the, the cyclical view, and I've said, you know, with so many views being thrown at you, there's really only one thing you can do, and that's just DCA at a risk level that makes sense to you and to stay Bitcoin heavy until dominance hits 60%. That has been my strategy for years, right? And we've come pretty close to 60%. Dominance hit 60 or 59.75% uh, this past week. Um, so it is getting pretty close to that milestone. And I don't think it makes sense to ignore what I have said. Um, there could be a, a change in the markets, around 60% dominance, and it could overshoot 60%. Um, but 60% has always seemed like an easy target for, for Bitcoin dominance to reach, especially with the idea of the devaluation of Ethereum uh, through the end of this year. So this, right, this is the cyclical view where Bitcoin rallies up in Q4 of the halving year, from the cyclical ROI, from the low, rallies at this point. The monetary policy view is slightly different. And the only reason, right, the only reason why I feel compelled to bring it up once again is because it hasn't yet been proven wrong, right? If Bitcoin can prove it wrong, then I'm happy to put it behind me, right? I, I would love that, right? But throughout this entire year, Bitcoin has been struggling, right, to, to, to really shake that view. 
And and so because of that, I feel like I have to stick with it until proven otherwise. Now, what would proven otherwise mean? If Bitcoin puts in a new all-time high, then it completely dismantles that view. Okay? So that is so I think this week will be instrumental. If you look at the daily time frame for Bitcoin, one of the interesting things that you will see, there are similarities to 2023. We'll talk about those in a minute. Um, but there's also similarities to what happened over here in May. Um, in fact, even from the point where, where Bitcoin sort of rallied up from after, you know, sort of set a low down here, right? It set a low, rallied up, rallied up to around 65K. See that, right? A rally up to around 65K. And then a pullback to around 60k same thing right a pullback to around 60k and then a rally up to a high at the lower high structure right a high at the lower high structure and so let's just really hone in on that you see that so that first rally that first rally by bitcoin from 60k took it to the lower high structure it then got rejected right? Came down all the way to around 66K. This time we went down to around 65K. It basically consolidated there a little bit, right? Just like it did over here. And then it went up again into the release of the labor market data, right? You see that? So it actually went back up into the release and it topped on Friday when the unemployment rate came out. If you zoom in, you can see what I'm talking about. You see that? So it, it, it went up Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It was red. But on Friday, while it was red, there was a wick that basically took out all the other prior wicks from that entire move. Right? It even took out that, that wick right there. So if that happens, right, that's, that's what I think you have to look for this week. If Bitcoin rallies up back up here, right, back up near like 68, 69K, and then it sort of wicks above sort of back to where this move was, right, back to around that level, and it gets rejected again, right, if, if there's a strong rejection off that and then back down, then I think the monetary policy view will, will sort of take over. If, on the other hand, Bitcoin can break out of that and really get above 70K and hold above 70K, and not just a wick, right? A wick doesn't mean anything, right? But if it can hold above 70K for really any time at all, right? I mean, even just a few, a few days or a couple of weekly closes up there, I think it would go a long way in distilling or sort of um, making it so the monetary policy view isn't as important. But if it gets rejected and you're wondering what's going on, then there is at least a reason we can use to explain it. I've told you guys a long time, right? No matter what the price does, there's always going to be a narrative to explain why it does it, okay? So if there is a rejection... We'll obviously come back on here and we will dive more into the monetary policy view more than we already have. If it breaks through, if it breaks through here, then I think the best course of action is to defer to the seasonality of Bitcoin in Q4 of the halving year, right? So I really think it comes down to that. Now, you're going to have people on either side very convinced of their view, right? Very convinced of their view. Now, I told you guys back in March, back if you think about it, this was more than half a year ago, almost eight months ago now, right? November will be eight months. I said back in March that Bitcoin will likely put in a lower high structure for six to nine months. Six to nine months. I said it many times. It's all over Twitter. Six to nine months. Six months took us through September. Nine months would take us through December. So there's a little bit of neutrality 
in my opinion, at this point, right? Because this, this view has already partially been completed, right? Six months has already happened. If it is nine months, right? If it is nine months, then you could get, right? You could get one more sell-off in the market. And it would not, even, even if that happens, it would not completely dislodge the entire market cycle, right? Even though I might feel like it would, I don't think it would. Because the counterpoint is if you were to look at, at ROI after cycle peak, go peak to peak, Bitcoin is still, it's, it's still in line with the last cycle, but it's still very much ahead of the 2016 cycle in terms of peak to peak ROI. So if Bitcoin can break through and, and hold above 70K this week, going into the, the week after, then again, I think it would make more sense to defer to the cyclical view, to the, you know, to the, to the typical move that Bitcoin gets in Q4. But if there's this wick, you know, if the, if it just gets the secondary move back up here, there's a wick to like 69 and a half or 70 K or something like that. And just gets rejected and it sells off again, maybe because the unemployment rate comes in hot. Then I think you have to, to defer to the monetary policy view at that point. And then simply say, look, it's the monetary policy view now, and 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 hopefully that's it, right? Hopefully you just get that. That would be the last move down. Um, now let's look at at the cyclical view a little bit closer, and then we'll look a little bit more closely at the monetary policy view. If you actually look at, at what happened in in 2023, Bitcoin fell below the 50-day and the 200-day SMA, right? And then it consolidated down there, and it even had sort of a, a little spike in between. You see that? Same thing happened over here, right? Consolidation. And there was a spike over here sort of in between. And then eventually what happened is Bitcoin rallied up, got rejected at the 50-day for a few, for about a week. Same thing right here, right? Got rejected at first. Then wicks above the 200-day, wicks above the 200-day. Then a rejection back down to the 50-day SMA, right? Back down to the 50-day SMA right there. And then it gets a move up. Now, back over here in 2023 when it made this move up, it just kept on going in the next week of October. This time, it made a move, but instead of continuing that move, it didn't go anywhere, right? It just consolidated. And I told you guys the reason it's going to do that is because the unemployment rate is more of a concern this year than it was last year, okay? So cyclically, this looks really similar to 2023, right? Go below the 20 day or the, the 50 day, 200 day, rally up to the 50 day, rejection for a few days, rally up to 200 day above it for a day or so, back down to the 50 day, and then back up. Same exact thing that's happened in 2024. So if it starts moving up and holds above 70K, then it's likely repeating the same thing in Q4. But there is another way to view it. And, and again, it's funny how similar these views are at this moment in time, but it is also at this moment in time where these views should diverge. If you look at the monetary policy view, right? If you look at the monetary policy view, in 2019, the Fed cut rates here, right there. In 2024, the Fed cut rates right here. After the Fed cut rates in 2019, Bitcoin rallied to the lower high structure, right? Bitcoin rallied to the lower high structure. You see that? Here, after the Fed cut rates, Bitcoin rallied to the lower high structure, right? I mean, it's the same thing. If you view it just through the monetary policy view, again, from a cyclical point of view, the 2019 comparison is over, right? We already had six months of lower highs, and we should be here where the breakout occurs, right? That's where we should theoretically be. In fact, if you look here, this is the 50-week moving average, right? You can see that Bitcoin got, you know, it found support there right around the 50-week SMA, kind of like it did right here too. You see that? But even though it found support, it still technically was a lower high. Yes, it was a pandemic-induced lower high, 
But at the end of the day, it was a lower high. I mean, that's what the market will remember is that it was a lower high uh, that did break through the lower high structure. This time, the lower high structure isn't really that much different from just it being a lower high because the angle of descent has been much more tempered. So, and again, the secret to the cryptoverse is, is Bitcoin dominance. I've, I've said that many, many times. And the only thing I will remind you guys of, I've had that 60% target on Bitcoin dominance for so long. Now, what happened last cycle? After the Fed cut rates, Bitcoin dominance continued to rally. Right? It continued to rally. And then Bitcoin dominance topped here. Just before Bitcoin fell to the 100-week moving average, right? Last cycle, the 50-week and the 100-week were basically the same at that point in the cycle. But this time, they're completely different, right? The 50-week is all the way up at 58.5K. The 100-week SMA is all the way down at like 42 to 43K, right? So there's a big difference this time between, you know, the 50-week SMA and the 100-week SMA. So here you can see what happened is that from the monetary policy view, Bitcoin got rejected at the lower high structure after the first rate cut. And then a couple months later, Bitcoin, a month later, Bitcoin dominance topped. And then a month after that, Bitcoin fell to the 100 week moving average to, to another lower low, right? So if that happens then you're essentially getting another lower low, which coincidentally happens to correspond to the 100-week moving average, which is exactly where it corresponded to back over here in 2019, right? That 100-week moving average. So I only bring this up because I, I feel like just for academic rigor, I have to, you know? And I honestly, you know, I, I, I sometimes... Uh, feel you know feel jealous that, that that you know there's people out there that they they just bull post all day long um, with no worry in the world and um, and honestly honestly that's probably probably the better way to go about doing things uh, because over the long haul the markets do generally go up they don't generally go down right I mean it's it it's harder to to be a bear over the long term than it is to be a bull over the long term as I've said many times the bears sound smart but the bulls make money right? Because there's always going to be stuff to worry about. Um, I would just say, you know, if we can break through that lower high structure, right? If we can really break above this high right here from July, which is just above 70K, then it will deviate completely from the monetary policy view, right? If we can just break through that high right there. If we can't, um, and, and Bitcoin gets rejected once again, then just know it would be the exact same thing that happened last cycle after rate cuts, right? Um, which is kind of interesting, right? I mean, it, it, and, and that's why we are at a crossroads right now with Bitcoin, because while both views can be, have been correct over the last seven to eight months, they can't both continue to be correct. Back in March, it was pretty clear to me that the monetary policy view would take over for at least half a year. Not just because of the monetary policy view, though. It was also just because if you look at the market cycle ROI from the low, we were very much ahead of norm, you know, ahead of schedule, uh, just like we got last cycle. And it seemed like Bitcoin needed to get back in line with the prior cycles and sort of put in lower highs for a while. So for at least half a year, it made sense to favor the monetary policy view over the cyclical view. Does that make sense, right? I mean, it made more sense then to favor the monetary policy view over the cyclical view. But now that Bitcoin is back in line with the prior cycles, it's not necessarily as clear, right? Like you can't look at it now and say that Bitcoin is ahead of, of schedule, right? It's basically where it always is at this point in the market cycle. The only thing you can really do is to look at the monetary policy view to say, you know, is there still risk associated with this move? The other thing you could do is you could look at net liquidity. You know, this is something that all Bitcoin pairs track really, really well. 
And I have said many, many times, you should not use net liquidity to tell you where the USD valuation of risk assets are going to go. Their net liquidity is useful for, ter- for telling you where alt Bitcoin pairs are going to go, right? If you look at alt Bitcoin pairs, they track, you know, alt Bitcoin pairs generally track net liquidity, right? And you can see they keep doing it. And I, I put out many video warnings about this that with net with the dollar rallying, that means net liquidity is going to start to go down. And you can see that it has, and alt Bitcoin pairs are following it, right? So net liquidity is better used for predicting alt Bitcoin pairs than alt USD pairs. All USD pairs are more so dependent on, on just Bitcoin USD, but all Bitcoin pairs are not dependent on Bitcoin USD. All Bitcoin pairs are dependent on monetary policy. But what's interesting is if you look at it like this, right, and you see sort of the uh, lower high structure by net liquidity last cycle, you see that? Um, and if you kind of compare it to this cycle, you could almost argue that like this was just sort of a, a major bubble in terms of liquidity and we just sort of repeated this one down here but you can see sort of after that that final move by net liquidity that final bounce that occurred as those rate cuts arrived right so this is the bounce that occurred as rate cuts arrived similar to this one you see that and it was as net liquidity was rolling over here right you see that as net liquidity rolled over right there that's where bitcoin put in the lower high in October after the first rate cut. And the same thing could happen again, right? Bitcoin is at the lower high structure just as net liquidity is sort of rolling over again, just like it did right there in 2019. So that is the monetary policy view. And I'm not, look guys, I'm not telling you the monetary policy view at this point because I'm trying to convince you. I was I showed you guys this back in March because I was trying to convince you then. I'm here to tell you that the monetary policy view still has credibility, but the cyclical view also has credibility, right? And because Bitcoin is at this point where it normally breaks up, I feel like it would be irresponsible to just say that, you know, one view has to be held, you know, to a higher level than the other view, right? Because at this point, they've both had merit over the last six months. Even over the last six months, you could argue the cyclical view had merit just because Bitcoin was ahead of where it is normally at this point in the cycle and it needed to get back in line. It's done that now, right? The easy fade on the perma bull up only bulls has already is already behind us, right? That was the easy fade, right? Of just six months of lower highs. That was the easy fade. That was more obviously going to happen. But there was no convincing a lot of people back in March. Now, it's a little harder, right? It's a little harder to to sort of uh, fade it because this is cyclically where Bitcoin typically does pretty well. That's why this week is so important, right? This week should help define what will take precedent through the end of the year. Is it the cyclical view of Bitcoin where it goes up at this point in the cycle and where it goes up at, you know, in Q4 of having years, 2016, 2012, 2020, and here we are again in 2024. Is that what will define Q4 2024, just like all the other Q4 of having years? Or will the monetary policy view take over and say, hold on a second, we still have to wait for more liquidity to come back. Because one thing to remember with the monetary policy view is that when Bitcoin broke out here, right, when it actually broke out, it actually corresponded to a Federal Reserve. Sorry, I put on the wrong thing right there. It actually corresponded to a Federal Reserve that had already started QE. If you look at assets held by the Federal Reserve, right, they started to pivot from QT to QE after Bitcoin put in a lower high after the first rate cut, right? It was right after that. That's where the pivot occurred. And then as QE came back, then Bitcoin broke through the lower high structure. Here, 
we haven't actually seen QE return, right? We've still just simply seen QT continue. So that's the monetary policy view. And listen, again, I'm not trying to convince you at this point of one or the other. Back in March, I was trying to convince you that the monetary policy view made sense because gold was breaking out. And also, as I mentioned back then, USDT dominance was hitting its long-term trend line, which, you know, back then, a lot of people also said was not relevant, right? They said it wasn't relevant back then. And here it again, you know, Bitcoin and the entire asset class had a huge correction after March 2024 when it hit this long-term trend line. You can also see that this trend line, sort of a shorter-term trend line occurred after June 2019, right? A, a year that the Fed cut rates. And then Bitcoin did, or sorry, USDT dominance did eventually fall below that trend line. And then, of course, we got a recession. Um, if you get a recession this cycle, it might not occur as quickly just because it's probably not going to, the unemployment rate is probably not going to go to 10%, right? As quickly as it did last cycle. But that is, is something that we've also been following, right? Is USDT dominance. This has been putting in higher lows, you know, in the same way that Bitcoin has been putting in lower highs, USDT dominance has been putting in higher lows. And technically speaking, uh, USDT dominance did have sort of a, a, a fake breakdown, right? Last week, or, or sorry, uh, a week, a little over a week ago, you can see that it fell below this trend line, but now it's right back above it. Um, so that's why I'm saying, right, this week is is going to be extremely, extremely important. I cannot stress how important this week will be in terms of defining the rest of the quarter. And I will just say it as clearly as I can. If Bitcoin, and even if it goes to 70K, right? I mean, even if it goes to 70K, that'll be exactly what it did back uh, a few months ago. If Bitcoin goes to 70K or anything lower than that and is rejected again, and somehow we go down again, and I, it, it might sound crazy, but it, you know, in 2019, Bitcoin rallied in October, and then it still went down November, December. Um, if if Bitcoin rallies to a lower high structure again and gets rejected, then the monetary policy view has cemented itself as a relevant view for for Bitcoin USD. It's already cemented itself as a relevant view for all Bitcoin pairs. But if Bitcoin puts in a lower high structure from here, then it sort of cements itself as relevant for Bitcoin USD at this point. Um, it's not clear that it is relevant. It's clear that it's relevant for all Bitcoin pairs, right? It's clear that it's relevant for Bitcoin dominance. And that's why I've said just Bitcoin heavy until until 60% dominance. But the great thing about that view is that there should be a, a warning, right? If, if there is a lower high structure, then it would likely correspond to Bitcoin dominance hitting 60%. And there that therefore that liquidity being sort of taken away, and then Bitcoin not having enough liquidity to continue higher. Um, so that should all be resolved this week. And the way I would play it is this: if Bitcoin gets rejected again at the lower high structure, then it'll be sort of a laser focus on the monetary policy view for the next few months to figure out, okay, how much, you know, how many rate cuts do we really need? Um, we've talked a little bit about it already, but we'll really hone in on it. Do we really need to shift to QE for Bitcoin to break through the lower high structure? Um, is that what will be required? So if rejection later this week, and it's probably not going to happen immediately, right? It's going to take, there's going to be a lot of labor market data coming in. The unemployment rate doesn't even come until Friday. Um, and remember last, uh, a few months ago, one of the last rejections off the lower high structure didn't occur until, until Friday, right? It was Friday, uh, in early June. So if it's a rejection, then the monetary policy view for Bitcoin USD prevails. The monetary policy view for altcoins against Bitcoin prevailed long ago. People just don't want to believe it, right? And now they're stuck looking at Bitcoin dominance near 60% when they didn't think it was ever going to get past 50%. If Bitcoin breaks through, right, which is what I think most people want to hear, if Bitcoin breaks through this, right, if it can decisively break through, then you pivot. I would pivot more so to this leaning for November, December, right? So that's why I'm saying, guys, November, December depends on what happens this week for Bitcoin. And, you know, and, and again, I mean, like, I think some people want sort of a clear, clear cut answer. But, you know, that's essentially my view for Bitcoin. Bitcoin's much harder to predict 
than a lot of other cryptocurrencies. Um, and it's a lot harder to take sort of a strong stance on it, um, especially fading it, when looking at the cyclical view. But if you were to look at ETH, it has been much easier to predict it this year, right? Much easier. Because you know why? It's doing the same exact thing that it did last cycle, right? And honestly, the even the lows are the same, right? This is, I mean, it's, it's honestly eerily, eerie. Like, you know, 80, just 10x, 800, 900, right? The next one was 100. The next higher low was 1,000 over here. Um, if I were to zoom in, right, it was it was about right around a thousand. The next higher low, fifteen hundred. Same thing here, right? And then the net when it fell back into the wedge, it had a wick down to about a little under one around one ninety, and this wick right there was nineteen hundred. It's the exact same thing. Right? It's the exact same thing. And if you look at interest rates, it's it looks like the same thing. I mean, look at it. It's the same exact thing. ETH fell back into the to the wedge as rate cuts arrived. I warned about this for months. Here again, it fell back into the wedge as rate cuts arrived. And then it fell out of the wedge. And after it fell out of the wedge, ETH Bitcoin finally bottomed after ETH USD fell through the wedge. So if, if you're looking at it for this cycle, it could still be, you know, it could still be ahead of us. Um and also, if you're of the opinion that monetary policy does not matter for, for crypto, that I have great news for you for ETH, because in 2016, in a halving year, every monthly candle that was green back then has been green in 2024, and every red candle back then has been red in 2024. It's crazy how similar it has been. And you can see that it also bled in November and December in 2016 right in fact i mean you can see right i mean june july august were red just like over here june july and august were red and september was green and here september is green and then april or sorry may was green just like in 2024 april was red just like in 2024 and then january february march were green just like in 2024 right it's the same thing for ethereum and ethereum has been a lot easier to to predict the reason why bitcoin is a little bit harder is because in Q4 2016, when ETH was going down, Bitcoin said to hell with that. And it went up during the same time. Now, the counterpoint, of course, is that Bitcoin was putting in higher lows through that period while ETH was putting in lower lows. But in this cycle, Bitcoin has been putting in lower lows with Ethereum, right? And if you look closely with Ethereum in um, last cycle, or sorry, in 2016, the main lows that occur occurred were in April, April, August, and December. And then if you look at Ethereum in 2024, it's the same thing, right? April. August and December, potentially where ETH finally goes home. The thing that is hard to reconcile is that every low by ETH to this sort of this, this move down was accompanied by a move down by Bitcoin, right? I mean, this low here corresponded to Bitcoin crashing in April, this low by Ethereum in August corresponded to Bitcoin crashing to the lows. So if Ethereum does drop back down, does it happen on another rejection by Bitcoin? It's tough, guys. I mean, it's really, really tough. Um, I'll keep saying what I've been saying, right? Bitcoin heavy till 60%. But once 60% is hit... Um, the market might start to change a little bit, all right? So please be aware of that. It's gotten close, and you could argue it's close enough. But I think, I still think it will hit 60. And it, I mean, it might even go above 60. But it, And the reason I say that is because if you look at all Bitcoin pairs, 
they just put on a new low, right? You know, I've done videos on the altcoin reckoning for years, and I've gotten a lot of hate for it. But as I've tried to explain to people, the altcoin reckoning does not refer to altcoins on their USD pairs. It refers to their Bitcoin pairs. And if altcoins put in a new low this past week, which they did, then the altcoin reckoning never ended, right? I mean, how is how is this not just the same thing, right? A massive move up and then a bleed back down, right? A massive move up and then a bleed back down where everyone just keeps saying this time is different, but it just keeps bleeding down. And and if you guys think that these are, you know, I'm looking at two high market cap alts and I should be looking at the micro caps. Well, if you look at others Bitcoin, I told you guys, this is likely going to sweep the low, go to the bull market support band, and then put in a lower low, right? And because it, it did the same thing here, right? Go to a low, rally, sweep the low, rally to the bull market support band, get rejected, go down. Same thing, right? Put a low, sweep the low, rally to the bull market support band, get rejected, go down, put in a new low. And I can't tell you how many people have have thrown this chart on my face so throughout 2024 to tell me why I was wrong about Bitcoin dominance because of how bullish others Bitcoin was, right? This chart, others Bitcoin, which is everything outside of the top 10. Um, but at the end of the day, others Bitcoin, this rally, this entire rally by others Bitcoin was a bear market rally, right? I mean, if, if a new low by others divided by Bitcoin was put in last week, which it was, then every single rally by Bit by others against Bitcoin was been has been a bear market rally since 2022 began, right? That is a crazy thing to think about, right? And there are so many people out there that would not ever even think about acknowledging such a chart, right? Because all they do is show meme coins, right? And they say, well, the reason why Bitcoin dominance doesn't matter is because this meme coin went up a lot. But I'll, I'll let you in on a secret, guys. A lot of them are just paid to shill this stuff or they're creating the meme coins themselves. And they just keep going from one to the other, pretending like it's some you know great thing, when in reality, they're all just bleeding back to Bitcoin. Now, the way they cope with that is to say, is to cherry pick a few that are doing better than the others. But I said back then, there's always gonna be a few that do. But the collective trend is down for that stuff, not up. And a lot of people get suckered into thinking that they see all these other people that they think are making a lot of money in meme coins. But a lot of it, I mean, some people are, but a lot of it, most people are just losing money because they keep chasing the things after they're being shilled, right? People buy them and then they shill them and then they get dumped on, they dump on their followers and then they just move on to something else. But you can see that, they're collectively bleeding back to Bitcoin. But good luck convincing them of that. But all you need to do is look at this chart and see what I'm talking about. All you have to do is look at the chart. Others oh, Bitcoin put in a new low this past week. So every move by it was a bear market rally since 2022 began. It's crazy, right? I know, but listen... As I said, if you look at if you look at interest rates, same thing happened last cycle. Others Bitcoin down 60, up 60, and then down 60 as rate cuts arrived. Same things happened this cycle, right? Down 60, up 60, and then it's already down 42 as those rate cuts arrived. What if it just keeps going down? That's exactly what it did last cycle. And everyone keeps telling me why it's wrong and why Bitcoin dominance won't keep going up. And it just keeps on going higher as those altcoins bleed back to the king. This is what happens during tightening cycles, right? All the garbage slowly goes to zero against Bitcoin, and Bitcoin dominance goes up. This is what happens. This is what happened last cycle. The only difference between this cycle and last cycle is that this cycle is basically taking, the cycle of others bleeding to Bitcoin is taking an extra year, more than an extra year, because last cycle it bottomed in August of 2019. This cycle, it just hit a new low in October of 2024, right? So you can see clearly that, you know, it's taken at least an extra year. And it could be, I mean, it could be close to a low, right? But it, it's at least taken an extra year. But so too did the 
sort of the pause, you know, the sort of the how aggressive the cycle was, the rate hiking cycle, right? This was much more large. This was much larger of a, of a hiking cycle. And I think that explains why a lot of this has taken so long to play out. So the monetary policy view has been a lot easier to understand as it relates to altcoins against Bitcoin, right? Because again, they're putting in new lows today, right? The bear market for them never ended. The monetary policy view is a lot harder to justify for, you know, for the USD valuations because for something like Bitcoin, when it's just been going up for so long, and the only the lower high structure didn't start till March, um, it's it's still kind of up in the air is if monetary policy will have that same effect. So the monetary policy view, I think I have explained. The cyclical view, I think I have explained. We'll reconvene next week, right? If it's a rejection, monetary policy view takes precedent for the rest of the year. If it's a breakout, the cyclical view takes precedent for the rest of the year. And I, I think it's as simple as that. In the short term, keep an eye on Bitcoin dominance. See if it hits 60%, because I do think the markets could become... I think the altcoins might start to uh, get somewhat concerned at that point, especially if it happens before the end of the year. You might say, well, hold on a second, Ben. If Bitcoin dominance hits 60, isn't that a good thing for our, you know, for our altcoins? But remember, last cycle, when dominance topped in September, alts didn't really start going up again until several months later, right? I mean, you know, during this process right here, after Bitcoin dominance topped and then bled back down, um, when that was happening, if you look at like total three, the altcoin market right here. So between when Bitcoin dominance topped and when it fell below the bull market support band, right? Altcoins still kind of just bled for a while, right? So you have to remember that. It's not like it flips a switch. I will contend that if dominance doesn't top until December, then it might just be, they might all just, you know, they might flip a switch and, and do well in 2025. But if it happens before December, then there could still be sort of that, that intermediate period where, where it does something else. Um, but yeah, we'll follow this. That's your monetary policy view. That is your cyclical view. It's decision time uh, for Bitcoin. And I, I think it'll, it'll make its decision this week as the labor market data comes out. So make sure you follow the labor market data, see where it comes in. If it comes in okay, uh, that would help Bitcoin more than likely. If it comes in not okay, right? If, it, if it's a big move up, it, um, it might not help Bitcoin. The only counterpoints to that, by the way, is like, I mean, there's a, there's a narr narrative for everything. If it comes in, if the unemployment rate comes in really, really low, then you might see yields start to really surge again, right? Like you might see like the 10 year yield and they're already starting to go up this week, right? But if, if you see something like that, if you see the unemployment rate coming low, then yields could go up, which would be an interesting thing because normally when yields go up, um, Bitcoin starts to struggle in the short term, right? I mean, like if you look at when yields really started to go up here in 2020, like right here, right? You know, this is the main bear market that Bitcoin had. And then last year, right? When um, yields started to go up right here, that was where Bitcoin was struggling right there. And you can see yields are starting to go up once again. So that's sort of the counterpoint, right? Like if the labor market, if it turns out the Fed pivoted too soon, then that's also not a good thing, right? Because that just means we might have to go back into rate hikes again at some point in the future. And uh, I, don't, I don't, I mean, it's not my base case, right? I don't really think we're going to get hikes anytime soon. Um, but I'm not saying the market wouldn't be completely turned off to even thinking about it. Um, if, you know, if the unemployment rate comes in really, really low. But that's where we stand uh, for the week. That's what I want to say. Cyclical view, monetary policy view. We should find out which one prevails in Q4 this week. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.